Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie. This is episode 11 and we are back in Bubble Gloop Swamp. I just uh, went ahead and became a crocodile ahead of schedule, so um, you guys can go ahead and do that. And uh, today we are going to be tying up some loose ends that we couldn't do without the running shoes. Well, we could do this one without the running shoes, but I chose not to just to make it a little easier for me. So, let's go into Mr. Vile's big croco nose and we'll play his little game. Now this is the area I didn't show you guys last time I was in here. This red crocodile here is Mr. Vile. Her, her, her. Greediest croc. So play the game, you win a prize. Press A to accept. Of course we're going to accept. Game simple. Eat more red yumblies than me. Ready? Three, two, one, go. So, like he said, the object of this game is to just eat more of these red things. Now, he can move a lot faster than you. So, now that we have the running shoes... Oops, forgot to press the bite button. Now that we have the running shoes, we can move fast. And we can, well, eat more of these than we could if we didn't have the running shoes. So, let's just keep going around. So as you see, I'm pretty consistently tied with him in this game. Just imagine how I'd be failing at this if I didn't have the shoes in this. Yeah, this is definitely one game where I'm definitely better without the shoes. Or with the shoes than without the shoes. Then again, I don't know if they really designed this game to be able to be done without the shoes. But either way, you can. Alright, so I won the first round. So now there are three games you have to play. So now there's a harder one. Eat the reds, but avoid the yellows. So they're not ripe. Three, two, one, go. Alright, so this round is very similar to the first one in that you have to eat as many red ones as you can see. But this time there are also yellow ones that appear. And if you eat them, then you'll cough and be sick for a couple seconds. So definitely slows you down. Um, a way to unfairly cheat this game, sort of, is if you're um, kind of in a race with Mr. Vile over a couple grumblies, just watch which direction he's headed into. Because he's an AI, of course, he just automatically goes in the direction of the red ones. So if you can't see them, you know there's one in that beeline that he'll make. So, yeah. Just always go in that direction, and if you're wearing the shoes, you can run faster than he can. Another reason why the shoes are good. Alright, this one I absolutely dominated. And I'll just stay over here so I'm near the shoes. Alright, so now we got to play one last game. Only eat what is shown at the top of the screen. So this time we'll be able to eat the red ones or the yellow ones. However, um, we have to wait until it appears at the top of the screen. If you eat the wrong one when it's at the top of the screen, you'll go into a bit of a coughing fit. So, yeah. Always be sure that the right one is at the top of the screen before you take a bite. Ooh, that was pretty close. Alright. Uh, oh, where are more red ones? There we go. I was just kind of giving up there, just waiting for the yellow one to pop up because I knew it was going to be soon. Oh wow, I just got a lot in a row there. Ooh, I keep really cutting it close. If you eat one a little too late when it's in the process of switching, um, you'll automatically start coughing even though that one was at the top of the screen when you uh, went to go eat it. So, always something to be aware of. And I win, so I'm just going to stop. Alright, so after winning three games, um, he'll give you the puzzle piece. Um, if you ever lose a round, oh, win three extra lives. So, after you get the puzzle piece, um, yeah, let's slide off like a slug. Um, after you collect the puzzle piece, like, I, like he said, he'll just do the challenge again, except this time you'll, um, you'll have to, uh, you'll get three 1-ups instead of uh, one extra life. 
Alright, so we're done with this place forever. So, now that we're done here, now we are going to return back to Freeze Easy Peak, and we're going to return to the uh, place where we raced bottles on the, uh, not bottles, uh, boggy on the sled race. So, see you guys there. Alright, just a quick stop before we go back to Freeze Easy Peak, and that's this area outside Gobi's Valley. We're just going to use this shock jump pad we got earlier to get into this open coffin that's over here, because uh, that's the uh, switch that we hit in Gobi's Valley uh, for the, the grunty switch. And then, of course, behind here, we also have another mumbo token, which would be uh, good to get. Alright, so uh, just, you know, now that we're done that, now I'll, I'll see you guys in uh, Freeze Easy Peak. Alright, here's Boggy again, and if the last time we were um, w against him as a walrus, but this time we are, you know, Banjo. So, I said A, accept the race, here's the rules, run through the red slalom weeds. It's the exact same thing as last time, the exact same course, except this time we get the running shoes instead of the sled. So, with the running... The running shoes is the absolute only way you can do this, because with Mr. Vile you could at least do it without. But this one, you need to have the running shoes, because he is just way too fast without them. As you can see, I'm kind of tearing up the slope here. But, uh, yeah. This race is a lot easier than the sled one, in my opinion, because you're in control of Banjo and Kazooie, and you can control the jumping of them a lot faster than you can the sled. So, yeah. Uh, one other thing that's a little different though is if you fall in the water this time, you are sunk. You lose your shoes, and there literally is no other way to get the shoes back. So, you're kinda stuck. Aw, oh, I lost. Alright. No. Alright, let's try that again. Ugh. Almost. Ugh. Rats, this time I fell in the water. And then he automatically disqualifies you if you get too far behind. Alright, take four. Alright, well, I guess falling behind there kind of helps. I don't know how, but... Well, whatever. Either way, he's off to look for his kid's presents now. Well, that's too bad, because I already did that for you, too. So, yeah. So, I've taken both puzzle pieces from him now, and now we are done in Freeze Easy Peak, which means we have done 100% in all the way up to this area. Well, all the way up to the next area, 100%. In Mumbo's Mountain, Treasure Trove Cove, um, Planker's Cavern, uh oh, Bubble Loop Swamp. Oh, hey, there's another Mumbo token down here. Fall down there and get it. Uh, Planker's Cavern, Bubble Loop Swamp, Freeze Easy Peak, Gobi's Valley. All 100%. Nice. Alright, so now it is time to leave this area because we are absolutely done here. And now is our first, um, harder level to unlock. You have to actually do a bit more than just go to a place. And, well, actually, you still have to just go to a place and hit the, uh, switch to unlock it. But, um, well, you'll see what I mean. Alright. Into the warp, and back to Gruntilda's lair. Alright, this will be the last thing we're doing for this video, so let's 
Let's go ahead and do that right now. So, um, to get there, you must first go up here. And remember that note door we saw earlier? Well, it's, it's about time to go through it. For 450 notes, we have 600. Easy peasy. And let's go on through. Now, this is the area where we'll be in for the rest of the game, mostly in Gruntilda's Lair, so learn it well. This is the fir the only time we'll have to go this way, though. So first, take this uh, route down here. There was a mad monster face there, so it's the way to a level. However, we won't be going to that level just yet, because it's not time. If you need air, now is the time to come up for it. If you don't, just continue on through here. It'll be quick, I promise. But if you don't want to play it, if you want to play it safe, go ahead and get air. I'm not going to stop you. So going through here, eventually we'll reach this big open wide place. And this is the area with the next puzzle piece. It's a little bit harder to find than the last areas have been. But, well, this game just keeps getting harder and harder. So over on the other side of the room, careful for that fish. If you get too close, he'll try and eat you. Um, there's a thing here, and we just have to jump from one to one, going up, going up, going up, and eventually we'll reach our uh, seventh puzzle location thing. So we press Z to enter it in, and we find the entrance to our next level opens, and that is Mad Monster Mansion. Congratulations! Alright, now if we continue on here once more, blow that up with feathers. You don't need feathers to do it, but, well actually you do. Well you can do it with eggs. You get a mambo token, and we're gonna need that, because the next two areas, that, there's only two areas left where we can enter, um, or get mambo's transformations, but they take a lot of tokens, so it's always good to have lots of tokens. Yeah, I believe to transform in Mad Monster Mansion, it's going to take us 20 mumbo tokens. So, we'll need that. So now that we're done that, we just come back the way we came, all the way back the way we came. We don't even need to be in this area anymore, because the entrance to Mad Monster Mansion is past the puzzle location where Gobi's Desert was. Ah, uh, didn't see all what Gruntilda said there, but... I'm sure it was disgusting as usual. Whoa, 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 whoa. Didn't see that mine there. That's close. Okay, so going on up, here is where I'm supposed to go. Whoop. Alright, so now we have to fall back down and return back through Gruntilda's big gaping mouth here. Om nom nom. And then just continue on this path. Um, here's where we uh, did Gobi's Valley. Here, is it Gobi's Valley or Gobi's Desert? I was, no, it's Gobi's Valley. That's right. Yeah. I always confuse myself. I, I just call it. Whoa, that was close. If you fall off this, there's nothing but lava down there. So, uh, yeah, don't fall off. Don't fall off. Maybe this is the lava world that Gobi was talking about. But I don't see him up there, so. Oh wait, Gobi hasn't said that yet. That's right. Anyways, here's Mad Monster Mansion. Uh, right now there's nothing. Uh, the enemy that appears in this area here are giant walking gravestones. They just kind of get up and start following you, so be aware of that. Oh, I kind of glitched on the stairs up. So, Mad Monster Mansion, we will be entering this area in the next episode of Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie. So, stay tuned for that and all of its mad monster gloryness and stuff. So, stay tuned.